Hello guys, Winston here. This video is where we start to get technical. Up until now, I've only gone over what a CNC is and how it works. Today, we're going to be talking about everything that happens on the computer side of things, and that can be broken down into three major steps. CAD, CAM, and CUT. Step 1, Computer-Aided Design, CAD. This is where we turn your idea into a digital representation. It could be a 2D drawing, it could be a 3D model, the distinction doesn't matter too much at the conceptual level, it only changes what particular software tools you would use. Step 2, Computer-Aided Manufacturing, CAM. This is, generally speaking, the process by which you take your model from step 1 and turn it into a CNC program or G-code. A lot of the heavy lifting in terms of programming is done for you behind the scenes by the software, but you'll still need to communicate your intent to the program that you're using. And finally, step 3, cutting. The G-code that you generated in step 2 gets sent to your CNC, which then executes your vision. At least that's how it's supposed to work in theory. This is usually where you discover unexpected problems pertaining to cutting parameters or material properties, but let's worry about that later. Let's make something simple. How about a drink coaster since I have some cups that need to be shown off? I'm going to be using Carbide Create for this exercise since it's good for simple 2D prototyping. It's by no means the best or only program you could use, and it's certainly not my favorite, but it does a good job of providing basic and essential tools while you're learning the ropes. Also, please realize that I'll be going a little faster than I would for a tutorial. I'm trying to communicate fundamentals as opposed to teaching you how to use a specific program. I'm trying to be software agnostic in my overview, and there are other great resources out there if you're looking for proper tutorials. Before I start drawing here, I'm first going to tell the program what kind of material I'm using. In this case, 5mm plywood. Some programs don't care, you can start drawing right off the bat, and they'll assume you'll provide the correct cutting depth later, these are minor details that will become second nature to you the more you do it. So, step one in the CAD CAM cut cycle, design. I'm going to start by drawing a 3.5 inch circle and position it so that the bounding box touches the origin. The origin is the zero point you start the machine at, which I'll show you how to set up in the next video. This is going to be the body of our coaster, but it looks a little plain. You can add in whatever geometry you want to decorate your coaster. I'm going to opt for some text. I'm going to scale my letters until they look like they fit, and then position them in the center of my circle. I'll also put in concentric rings as a border for style, and that's it for the design phase. For the CAM portion of our workflow, Carbide Create will also generate G-code for us. If you'd sketched out a 2D drawing in something like Illustrator or Inkscape, then you'd have to import that vector file into something like Carbide Create or another 2D capable CAM program. You have options like MakerCam, Easel, Cut2D, VCarve Pro, MeshCam, and so many more. The same basic principles apply to all of them, so you can learn the fundamentals first, then figure out which particular program or programs best fits what you want to make. Continuing in Carbide Create, I'm going to first highlight the text I put in. You almost always want to work from the inside out when machining. Parts generally get weaker as you remove material, so cut the interior details first. With the text highlighted, I'll make a pocket operation using a 1 16th inch end mill. This will create letters recessed into our coaster. To prevent these letters from going all the way through our coaster, I'll set the final depth of cut to be 1 16th of an inch. This doesn't mean your router will plunge that entire depth all at once. The step down value is what controls the actual thickness of the layer you're removing at any given time. Smaller end mills are more fragile and should take thinner cuts. Also of interest here is the feed rate or linear travel speed of your spindle. Carbide Create has some default values programmed in if you tell it what material you're using. These tend to be on the conservative side, so don't mind me, I'm just going to turn things up a notch for efficiency's sake. Now, for the coaster's decorative border, I'm going to select both the inner and outer edges and apply a pocketing operation like I did for the letters. Carbide Create, just like most other CAM programs, will assume you want to cut the space between these profiles. And finally, I'll select the outer boundary of my coaster and follow that contour on the outside. If you cut on or inside the line, your coaster will be smaller than you sketched it. Make sure that this cut goes the full depth of your material, otherwise you'll be cutting out your coaster by hand. In some cases, it's even beneficial to overcut your piece to guarantee a clean and complete cut. Carbide Create can show you a basic preview of what your final product will look like, and if you don't see any errors, you can export your G-code to a file you can send to your CNC later. And that, folks, is the majority of a basic CNC workflow. There's certainly many variations you could take and different software options you could use, especially in the world of 3D design, but they all follow the same steps. Design a part, tell your software how it should be cut, and then run the resulting G-code program. 
That last part is what we'll cover in the next video. Thank you all very much for watching.